favorite photographers who passed away uh, recently is Elsa Dorfman. Mm. She shot almost exclusively with the 20 by 24 Polaroid, which, you know, they don't really make media for anymore. And I would like to make, you know, if not an exact copy, like a replacement functionally for that, be able to make a direct positive. I did a couple of sketches on how big and how heavy an Afghan box camera would have to be. You know, one, a 20 by 24 might use something like an 800 to 1,000 millimeter lens, which might focus, uh, you know, around seven feet when you're doing a one-to-one -one portrait. Yeah. Um, and so, like, now your box is seven feet long, plus you have to get your arms in, right? My right. shoulders are only yeah. so wide, and maybe I could come in And you from have the side. trays of chemistry that are, you know, big, and the volume of the liquid yeah. Just the weight of it, right? And so, like, the original yeah. idea was, okay, you need at least a 20 by 24 area for the trays, right? picking yeah. it up and, like, yeah. moving it around. Right. It would just be really awkward. So yeah. we thought about vertical slots. Right. Um, and then we also thought about um, PVC pipes that had, like, screw flanges in the bottom of the camera that would screw in uh, with an end cap, and then you would taco the, the image yeah. kind of... Yeah. You know, like, like that, that. Yeah. and stick it in the pipe. But yeah, we calculated yeah. somewhere between 70 and 150 pounds of chemistry, even like at a, at a bare minimum for this sort of system. And yeah. like, it's the size of my shop. And then where do you have room to like put somebody to shoot? And like, probably we want to shoot outside the shop. And so yeah. we needed a different, yeah. different system to right. be able to do this. Right. Um, and that led us to thinking about, um, I got this idea uh, based on like a camera that was made maybe the late 1800s, early 1900s, where you would take the picture and turn it, and then they had like powdered developer, and you would pour it into the camera and like get one picture. It was a one-time right. use thing. I think it was a French camera. And so I thought about the idea of what if we had a camera back uh, that worked like, you know, a, a standard large format film holder that was also a developing tank that you could actually pull off of the camera because i'm not going to take a seven foot long 20 by 24 standing on its back and start pouring pitchers of water and it just doesn't make sense yeah. but like you could pull the the tray out and so i made this thing as just a little proof of concept it's a pinhole camera um, and then there's a dark slide shutter behind the pinhole so you would put your paper in the back uh, take your picture as normal with any pinhole, close the shutter, and then the shutter closes entirely behind the screw cap. And the screw cap has a little uh, pinhole piece of aluminum in the back. And then you've got this uh, light baffle, which works like a developing tank, so it lets liquid and no light, and so you can blow through it, but you can't see through it. And then you pour the, uh, screw this on, and then pull this guy out, and you can develop pictures right in there yeah. and um yeah i mean that became like a successful product and i thought like okay we're on a roll yeah but the this the idea works um i didn't really want to build pinhole cameras i didn't really want to build small cameras but like this was a couple weekend project rather than what what has taken us yeah. a year and a half, year and, and, a half. And, and not with some detours <laughs> okay so we had this camera this was uh, the prototype we made. Basically, you know, it looks like a regular 8x10 film holder, and it has the same outline in the front and the same light trap. We made this thing and a shim, so a normal 8x10 film holder is about 5 millimeters from the flange where it meets the camera back to the film. Yeah. It pushes the uh, normal uh, focusing screen back so that it's in the same plane as the paper would be right. in the thicker back here. Yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, this has a normal dark slide like anything. And the way we attach the paper is there's a little pocket in here. It's hard to see because it's black, but a pocket for a sheet of paper. Um, and then this frame went on top of it and it had some embedded magnets that would yeah. just some uh, jump rare into earth place. magnets that are very strong and holds it in place. Yeah. Yeah. But so you would stick it in the camera, uh, pull the dark slide out, take a picture, put the dark slide back in and pull it out of the camera. And then um, where there used to be a uh, screw uh, okay. tube, so this funnel would screw on and you'd pour your chemistry in here and develop. Uh, we decided to pick up where we had left off with this. We've been working the last few weeks on the 20 by 24 inch ultra large format camera and self-developing back system. So we're at the point now where we're ready to test uh, the camera, but we're going to initially do some tests with an 8x10 box camera and 8x10 self-developing back. And we're going to be using the black and white 
reversal process that uses citric acid and hydrogen peroxide. So we have some chemistry set up here and we have some Dectol developer, citric acid, peroxide. This is like 12%, the 40V and some sodium sulfite and coffee. Coffee is for me, not for the, not for the process. So once uh, we can verify that our new batch of 20 by 24 inch paper works good and what the right ISO speed is, we're gonna cut it down to eight by 10 just to run a test through the eight by 10 camera and then we'll start doing some 20 by 24 inch tests with the big camera and the big self-developing back. So should be a fun, busy day. It's kind of hot out here, it'll get hotter. Well, okay then. Uh, we're kind of on a drippy angle here, but. A drippy angle. We're gonna make do. This is paper developer. Yep, it's deck tall, I think. All right, two and a half minutes, and we will see next step. All right, two and a half minutes in the deck tall. This is how grandpa used to do self-develop, auto-developing or yep. self-developing back. So this is, this water race is just to extend the life of the developer. We're going to be doing a number of tests. Some citric acid. Citric acid mixed up from powder. Yeah, 30 milligrams to the liter. The modification I made to this process is that we're going to do this for a full three minutes. Ah. Um, and that should allow me to just use citric acid once. Ah. So it's been over a little over two minutes in the citric. All right, so we're going to take a look. Oh. Got a nice contrasty. Oh, yeah, pretty sharp uh, focus, show. I'd say, for a wooden box camera. Yeah. Wow, it's, it goes purple like almost yeah. immediately. So this is what paper? Color. Uh, this is multi-tone, I believe. It's like the Adorama cheap. Adorama multi-tone, okay. Yeah. So just about three minutes now. Okay. Fly in there. There's a fly in your uh, citric acid. And the flies are attracted to that like they would with fruit. Yeah. All right, so the mod that I made to this process is that um, I've been going for three minutes in the citric acid and then just bleaching for you know four minutes straight okay four minutes in peroxide or you know we'll see we want to do it Timer by inspection reset. still but oh it's already something's already happening yeah we basically you can do this in the daylight I mean in theory yeah. so cool. the, the color goes away pretty quickly yeah, interesting. I think we're going to get most of your head here, and then I'm just going to... Uh, Solarized. Yeah, I'll do one more round. That's the nice thing about being able to do this by inspection in the open yes. is you can, you know... And, and if you foresee doing this eventually in public for people, they can watch the process unfold, mm -hmm. which is part of the mystique of it. Hey, the shirt is starting to... Yeah, I think we're going to get it I all, I see my, the logo here, the Japan Camera Hunter logo is starting to show up. Yeah, I'm starting to see the positive latent image yeah. below. Which is real exciting, huh? Yeah. Okay, so I would say that that's totally bleached out. Yes. Um, so Pour your bleach, your peroxide back, right? And then you're going to uh, rinse it a little bit to, so you don't yeah. mess up your developer. Well, so I'm, I'm actually going to use some sodium sulfite oh, to clear right. okay. anything. Although I don't see any staining, it's, you know, good practice just to give it a minute or two yeah. in the sodium sulfite. Right. So when the peroxide starts getting purple yeah. or doesn't bleach. That's when you... Right. Either if it's not so effective or look at the purple. sodium sulfide actually has some developer activity in it. Oh yeah. Interesting. And there's the deck tall that we use for the first... Ooh, there look we at go. that. There is the reversal. That's actual deck tall. Yes. As opposed to uh, whatever else it was. You okay. know the highlights are pretty darn good because I think there's still some detail in the bright parts mm -hmm. of my t-shirt. That's really cool. 
Yeah, you know, we need a little bit of fill light before we get to 16 by 20, but I right. think ISO 3 is a reasonable rating on this paper. Sweet. Uh, you yeah. Know, we had it about 18 months ago, and then we had a lot of problems with yeah. old chemistry, and it was like, yeah. dude, what, what did we forget? But uh, yeah. now I feel confident that we will only ruin this big process 87 times today. <laughs> oh, wild. I didn't even use the loop to focus that. 